if you feel that poverty is a problem, you probably don't know how bad wealthy people have it. So no, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what this video is that's about. It. He and knows poor po poor people very well. He knows poor people, but he knows rich people better. So okay, let me do. These shorts take a little bit of finesse to get perfectly. Is a better advantage than f being born into something? Being born into nothing. I'm on the record. Remember, I said it. Can't wait to watch it. In okay, so what he said is, you know, it's better than being born into something. Being born into nothing. <laughs> No, yeah, totally. No, but don't worry. He's got he's got a reason there. He's got reasons. He's got really good reasons. Okay. Twenty years. The internet, the way it is today, I'd rather have zero than a hundred million people that have zero. Are like this guy's an idiot. That's because you don't talk to trust fund babies. I do. I talk to trust fund babies. They DM me. I meet them in real life because of my business career. They're sad. Do you know what? It, do you know what it's like to talk to a human being that looks at you at twenty-two years old and says, "No matter what I do, no matter what I do for the next eighty years, it will never be my own accomplishment." Everybody will always say I was handed it and I'm done. Do you know what kind of level of depression, cocaine, and partying until you die that leads to? A lot. You know what I think is a better oh, that advantage? That sounds so sad. Just, just depression, cocaine, and partying sounds so sad. It, they just have to like party till they die. Yeah, it definitely doesn't sound worse than uh, depression, poverty, and no food, but okay. Yeah. You ever looked at someone who's hungry on the street? Yeah, that's no big deal. But have you ever looked at someone who lives in a condo that their parents bought and they just do cocaine and party all the time? That's true heartbreak, break, baby. And I love how he looks around at people like, this is revolutionary information, right, guys? Right? Staff yeah. that I've hired myself and uh, is forced to shake their head yes at everything I say? Yeah, that sounds like he's very. Yeah, it's better to be born into nothing. That's something that Gary says fairly often. And I wanted to find that clip originally, but it's a little bit longer. But he always says, like, I wish that I could lose all of my money so I could start over and prove to everybody that I am like the phoenix and I know how to like do everything so well now that I could just you know be even bigger and better than before and people would never criticize me again it's like you know you could do that right you could give away all your money and and prove that point if you really wanted to there's nothing holding you back from doing that so why don't you do what it bro <laughs> just because he wants the money like obviously you know um i wish also that i could um have all of gary's money so, so that i can prove that parting and cocaine is not as bad as being poor so you know gary if you're watching um you know i'm keen i i would take a door yeah me too that's the thing. It's like, if put your money where your mouth is, bro. Like, that's what I always want to say to these people. Like, I feel like someone else said it recently too. They're like, oh, I could, you know, I'd rather have nothing than like what I have. Like I could, I could rebuild. I could, you know, start over and do it. It's like, then fucking do it because they all say that, but then they forget like, oh, when you started, you had something too. Like Gary had a $3 million business that his dad built to work with. That was the difference. That is the tipping point, as they say, that made him successful versus someone who has everything else that Gary has all the ability all the smarts all of the you know the grind the hustle whatever that was the difference between Gary and someone who went into a career at a nine to five and made it work prove that's me otherwise <laughs> that's how much it was worth I thought this was like a small wine shop yeah, valued at $3 million before Gary even got oh involved in God. it. Oh my God, please. Like, this guy is full of shit. Like, what did you do with $3 million? You made Vayner Media? Like, well, okay. I thought, I thought it was this was like a small shop. And, you know, I really, I, I was giving it to him a little bit, like, as, as in mm -hmm. credit. <laughs> but, never do that, Cam. I, never serious. give them credit, ever. Look up their shit and make sure you see it, like, fully before you go, yeah, okay. Because I did that too. Like, you had me fool there for a minute because I thought, you know, a small wine shop, okay, he made, uh, like, he created a company, VaynerMedia, okay. Because, like, I never thought, you know, VaynerMedia is that impressive. I'm like, it, it, the guy's just an influencer. All yeah. they do there is just get sponsorships. Like, what like what else can they do? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So um, I was like, okay, but fair enough he, since he came from, like, not a lot. But, like, $3 million is, like... 
Sorry, a lot. Like, we, this is almost like a waste of money what he's doing with me. Well, okay. His whole thing is he, his dad started a liquor company <clears throat> and in New Jersey. And he, the dad himself, Gary worked there like stocking shelves when he was young, younger. But his dad built it somehow to a $3 million business on his own. Gary then got involved as a, you know, he went to college, but then left or something, something happened in between that time where he got involved and it was right at the beginning of Google AdWords. So Gary took the liquor store and put it online and started selling wine online. And he was one of the first people allegedly, according to him to do that back in the day. So he took his dad's physical store and then made wine library, which was like a website back in like 2000 three, four, something about that. In that time, he bought AdWords. He bought like wine, the word wine. So he owned it. So if you Googled wine back in 2004, according to him, like it, his, you know, dad's liquor store business online would pop up and he would ship, you know, whatever you wanted to wherever. And so then in 2006, he was one of the first people to embrace YouTube in the sense of for his business, he like was an early adopter to it. And he came up with this YouTube show called wine library TV, where he would rate wines and like a very lowbrow way and be like, this wine tastes like Oreo dust. This wine tastes like Cheetos or whatever and dirt. And he would like, it's very obviously it's not even fucking like, you know, correctly on the tripod in this, in this shot. And this is what he did. He made like a thousand episodes while he was growing the online business. And then he grew the $3 million business liquor store, you know, in person brick and mortar into a $60 million online wine shop. So that's his success. Not saying anything that he did was wrong or stupid or bad or, you know, whatever, impressive. But he didn't fucking invent, you know, like a new system of anything. He got in early. He had a lot of capital to work with. He had his dad's established business and he made the right moves and then made investments in like Uber and Facebook and now has that to work with as well. So I'm impressed, but I'm not fuck. He's not a revolutionary in any fucking sense of the word. Sorry. I am beyond unimpressed right now. Like I yeah. was... Just uh, like seriously, yes, okay, it's something to turn three million into sixty, and then further on. But it's like turning three dollars into sixty dollars. Okay, I could do that. Yeah, it's like taking take three dollars and make it into a million dollars, and then I'll be impressed. But taking three million into sixty, while it's impressive and it's you know definitely a business you know shows acumen in some way. It's not like Jesus reincarnated and became a business guru. Like, it's just not like the way he gives advice as if he's the only person who's smart on the planet. It's just, it's infuriating to me after a while. Yeah. It's like, I get, you know, and then Vayner media, you know, apparently allegedly I hear people say like, oh yeah, he does car commercials and he has clients like Ford and this and that. I've never seen proof of that. People say it. I have never seen a commercial that has won an award. That's like this is a very a gainer or a, a gainer, Vayner Media like production. All I see is like them creating content about Gary V's life. Yeah, I mean, duh. But they claim like, <laughs> yeah. oh no, we make commercials for Ford. I'm no. like, where, when? I don't see it. Oh, like as in he's got a production company? Like that's Yeah, like never... he's a media he's like a like a advertising agency essentially. He's not like he's he's a self advertising agency. That's what I feel. <laughs> but then he's yeah. like he'll claim like he's like, Oh, we make, you know we make ads, we make organic content for like all these companies. I'm like, I have not seen one example of it. And maybe I'm just I haven't done my research, you know, good enough, but if he's doing that, then he's a failed influencer. Sorry. Well, he makes he makes his money, personal money, by, you know, speaking. His fees are probably like 100000 plus. So he goes and speaks constantly at all these events, constantly. You know, and a lot of them are, um, what do you call them? Like scam, um, scam magnets. So he'll come. He's like a legitimate person. He doesn't sell any courses or whatever. So he'll come as the magnet, but then every other speaker on the list that you have to listen to before he gets on stage is a scammer. And that's his whole grift. So he gets this money. Those other scammers pay to speak to people and have them be in this like, like uh, warm lead situation. And they'll sell them like real estate courses, whatever. And then Gary speaks about whatever the fuck he wants at the end. And that's his whole thing. So he'll say like, I don't do scams. It's like, yeah, but you're a part of scams. You'll speak at scams. 
you'll willingly yeah, like him give and your name and to scams. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, he, I mean, the thing is, I find that if you have, um, if you have a brand that pays more than a hundred K per like speech mm -hmm. going into production for like video, no it's sense. like, exactly sorry but that's not even remotely close like i've done video production for like promotions like it's nothing crazy in terms of money it's like yeah okay maybe my my level let's say didn't pay like that so let's assume uh that times 10 still nothing compared to 100k like yeah, I mean, like you could say, like, well, he's, you know, okay, look, this is VaynerMedia.com ad week, media agency of the year. This is a story of pirates. Reuniting media and creative is the one thing this the agency doesn't need to worry about. So apparently that's the agency that he has created. But I, I don't, maybe they do it all in the shadows, but I haven't seen one thing. It says, and then they always say, oh, we make Super Bowl commercials. Like like when? Where? Oh, Which TikTok. ones? Okay. It sounds like he wants to do this, but I I, I don't know. They're a global know. creative it... and media agency that works differently because we're built differently. This is like uh, almost like one of these things where they have to put something on the website to be able to call themselves tech. I know. It's all, oh, I hate that. That's my biggest pet peeve in life. It's like an obviously non-tech company calling themselves a tech company because they use Google in the company. <laughs> yeah. Like maybe they are, maybe they are planning to, but like it's not something that people think of Gary V for. Like I mm -hmm. think most companies when they want like a video production thing they go to video production companies and there's like loads out there like you know you you don't think oh gary v he's the one who's gonna make me a video for like i, I mean i think i think this is like a, a good thing to investigate because i've been wondering about it for a while like you know i, I like i want to hire them to make my business successful you know okay they have the options to do that but how like I've not there's no examples I need an example and apparently they have offices New York LA London Tokyo Mexico City Singapore Bangkok Sydney Pedaling yeah I don't Jaya? think that's true I think they have some but for example there was one in San Francisco that went uh bankrupt uh <laughs> apparently they have very high turnover in VaynerMedia because pe people are mm -hmm. apparently paid like shit um, I've heard that as well. And, and they also have like a lot of young people who need proper, especially if you're like in New York City where it costs so much to live. Can you yeah. imagine just being paid like crap for VaynerMedia? But they're like, but he's pushing this hustle thing on them. So it's making them work like hours, long hours uh, for, you know, yeah, the dream. Um, the dream, which baby. probably is somewhat illegal. So I, I don't know. Vayner, Vayner 3, a Web3 consultancy. Vayner 3 is a Web3 oh, consultancy. Yeah. Oh, Focus on guiding fun. global enterprises in the next iteration of consumer behavior. Okay, this is his holding company website. So he's got all these different companies within the company. Tingly Lane, corporate trade media data company providing omni channel. So I don't even know what this shit is. So, so on LinkedIn, many. it shows up with uh, offices New York, LA, London, Singapore, and Mexico City. And on Vayner Media, it's like New York, LA, London, Tokyo, Mexico City, Singapore, Bangkok, Sydney. So I think some of these are made up. <laughs> yeah. I think some of these are made up. Like Vayner they're just X. exaggerating. They're like, they have a freelance over there and be like, yes, uh, yeah. head headquarters in Singapore. Like, yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. I just, I don't hear, I, all I hear about Gary V is about himself, his life. And unless he's got this like blossoming company that does all this amazing work in the shadows, I don't understand why he would there was I, I did some research on this like a while ago because I made, I think it was previous to my video on his divorce i made a video no i don't remember I, I anyway i was looking into this and i saw reviews and people were like not like happy with working at vayner media they were just they they were saying that they were overworked and like um, the pay was not great and stuff like that and i that's i think where i found out that they 
uh, shut down the offices in San Francisco. There's some there's some stuff on the internet about this. Um, mostly like reviews and uh, mm. I think Glassdoor would like have some stuff. But mm. um, I did you know, read some Glassdoor stuff. Yeah, the, there was also like a, a story in my research that came up with um, a client that or no someone who hired or a client of theirs because like it doesn't make sense the other way um so they weren't getting paid they were <laughs> getting paid by exposure them. Like, they were having to chase them and oh. it was something like they got like 10k but then like they didn't get the rest of the money so it was like a big so if he is m- making video content i don't understand why he needs another company to make things for him like if his own company does mm-hmm. the content like you know what i mean it, it sounded like he needed another company to like make things and he's an advertising agency so why do you need that if you have like your own team? yeah if you like, only have your internal in-house something weird's going on i feel yeah, like I something's like missing here yeah like what he does i um, think he will i think <clears throat> Also, that his NFT thing is like going under. Oh yeah. Um, Anyone who's getting NFT has like, like lost billions of dollars, probably. Yeah, but he wanted like he or he has. Uh, I oh, okay, and he I don't think he has it yet. But he was planning to release this like NFT restaurant. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember that. If you have, <laughs> NFTs. can you imagine now with like a booming, uh, looming recession and like the NFT is going under and stuff like it's just. Yeah, he owns this empathy? company too. Empathy Wines. I've never heard of Empathy Wines. <laughs> if you have, if you have empathy, buy the, his wine. That's such a bad name for a wine. Such a bad name. For uh, a wine. You think that's a bad name? Do you want to see his NFTs for a second? Oh my God, he's got. <laughs> I a think I've collection. seen one or two, but he's trying to make he's trying to make Pokemon for NFTs. Okay, there should be this. It's for children, I think. Uh, so yeah, Gary Vee is now have a money to buy NFTs. Yeah, because like, okay, oh man, I wish there was one with all of them in it, all of the V friends. Okay, so you can get the 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 vibe. It's like all cartoony, but okay. Um, basically, it's like every word with an animal. So this is perspective pigeon. So this is an <laughs> NFT. And yeah, we can so the it right now without paying for it. Yeah, the pigeon. So you buy the you can buy the pigeon, and he drew them all, and he drew them. And there's a video right now. I don't. Why do I need to pay like fifteen grand for that? I don't know. Oh, more than that, probably. But yeah, this is the type of content that Gary Vee's uh, saying is the future of the internet. Old flash cartoons. (laughs) Yeah, I think I think it's more like uh, where he lost all his money. That will be (laughs) the story of of the internet. (laughs) <laughs> yeah like you know he had a whole conference like about it yeah they would they would have like family dinner and he'd be like ah oh, grandpa's telling the story about how he lost all his money again <laughs> oh that gary that guy gary he's so funny okay yeah here's some more this is gary v's future <laughs> child cartoons yeah, this is, I will never understand NFTs. Like, I can see it right now. Yeah, this is hold on. Literally. Oh, it's right there, duh. Just as good as me b- purchasing it. I can still see it on my computer. Shrewd <laughs> like, shark, I- intuitive <laughs> iguana, ambitious angel, okay, patient panda, karma kiwi, adventurous astronaut, thoughtful tr- three-horned harpic, all right, that's a stretch. It's like advertising to like toddlers, because this is like, even ten year olds are like gonna be cringed out by this. Yeah. Okay. Let's watch, let's put one on. Let's see how let's see how mature these cartoons are. Let's put one on with like um, volume. Have a problem, Mr. Sloth? Could you hold the door, please? Hey, somebody stop my hot dog cart! Gladly. <laughs> I'm too slow. Uh, not exactly. You see, the real problem is that you're unaware of your own limitations. By my reckoning, in order to maximize your selflessness, you must help those who move at your speed. I'll never be quick enough to cross this intersection on my own. Thank you, self-aware hair. Always happy to help. 
I can tell you've got a bit of a problem. So that's what he's up so to. So like I, I was expecting written and directed by Jay Shetty on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> that's tarot. Uh, you know, I feel like these people are just like they deserve this though, because like I, I feel agree. like. I don't know if this is the same situation with like VaynerMedia and Gary, but when I saw Jay Shetty on Tom Bilyeu's set being interviewed and Tom was so like fascinated and like mm-hmm. so in love with Jay Shetty and I was like, Tom is like ready to give this guy a job. Like he's yeah. gonna, he's gonna be like, can you direct my, my first like blah, blah, blah. And mm-hmm. I'm assuming Gary would be like the same. Like they would meet a character like Jay Shetty and be like, oh my oh. God direct my nft anime yes. shit and, and the guy would be like it. yeah totally. and you then the stuff. and then you get this crap like <laughs> and yeah. I, I, like they deserve their fate sorry yeah i mean it just seems like a very clear like i think he probably gets a lot of kids who write to him and like actually engage with his content he can see that like it's it's got it's skewing younger and younger because older adult people know that what he says is stupid at at a certain point some people do but I think like the 17 year old male category is probably like really into him and so you got to get him young so that they like him from 6 to 17 because once they're 18 they are in the real world they're not going to like him anymore because they're like okay this didn't work I tried and it didn't work so I think he's he's skewing his content so young that he can just you know manipulate you from an earlier perspective Come I on. think that this does not appeal. Like, like my ex's kid was like, uh, you know, uh, twelve or eleven, and Look at this. He's twelve now, and mm-hmm. he would not be impressed with this. Like, they they want like you know Fortnite stuff. They want like cool like yeah. you know. Skewing teenager type, you know, you know, like they don't. Want... So I think he's like he must be like aiming for like. Taught, like young like yeah. young young what are those guys gonna be like mommy buy me an nft like <laughs> sorry how is that conversation gonna go flexing fox yo i'm f- okay here looking hot and hitting the spot it's back again with another show maybe it's time that we let it go Never seen anybody flex like this A better miss more text coming from my fist It's gonna rattle your brains and shake your intellects No one's ever the same after they see me flex Both of us gonna make us cry We all know you wouldn't hurt a fly Why you laughing? This is serious I thought this demonstration wouldn't miss We gotta tell you something Oh, the rhyme! This world of compensation Is talking what you really stand for We know the real you That's hiding behind those shades Hiding behind those shades but I love the flex. Well, how about this? I love the flex, but I do it my way. I'm flexing fox. I'm flexing fox. I'm flexing fox. I'm flexing fox. Jesus Christ. That got like two hundred likes. Don't be flexing. Be yourself. I guess. I don't know. I- I'm not impressed. Okay, I mean, yeah, 272,000 like, followers. I got 200 likes. I mean, something ain't right. 200 likes. To I don't even want to imagine how much that costs to make. Like, that costs a lot of money oh, to make. Oh, yeah. There's production in that. Even though it's stupid, there's still production costs. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I feel like he's wasting. <laughs> this guy's going to go broke with all his NFTs and wasting <laughs> this- his money on this crap. <laughs> like, uh, I don't know. Is he trying to rival Disney like Tom Billy? What, what's They're all trying to rival Disney. It's so funny. Yeah.